Hey, my friends, happy Sunday. So good to see you again. We are on lesson four out of our five Sundays for our five lessons that we talk about with the Easter story. Have you guys been working in your journals? Have you been going through? We have five colors, five action words, and five lessons, right? Have you been writing in your journals um, things you praise God for? Those are our action words, right? Things that you um, serve, ways you serve, things that you pray for ways that you sacrifice and things that you hope for, right? Those are our five action words. I hope you guys are going through those and filling those out as well as going through this story. So let's get to our story number four. Last week we ended and Jesus was leaving a garden. Do you guys remember what garden that is? You're so right, the garden of Gethsemane. And he was there with Peter, James, and John, right? And they kept falling asleep and he was asking him to pray. And then suddenly Someone came into the garden leading soldiers. Who was that? That's right. It was Judas, the disciple that was going to betray Jesus. And so he did. For just a small pack of silver coins, he betrayed Jesus, led those soldiers to him. And here we pick up our story. I know there's lots of steps in between, so I hope you guys are reading these stories with your family and your children's Bibles and your mom and dad's big kid Bibles. But... Um, We're to the point now where Jesus, the crowds have been cheering, crucify him, crucify him. And they've beat Jesus. They've given him a huge cross and made him carry it himself all the way up to Calvary. And Calvary was a place where they would take thieves and murderers to end their lives, right? But now they were taking Jesus, who was our savior and who was our king, up to Calvary. And they put Jesus up on the cross and they nailed his hands out and they nailed his feet to the cross. And our our color for today is red because of the blood that was shed on the cross. For who? Who is that for? It was for you and for me. And at the end, Jesus said, he looked up to God one more time and he said, it is finished. Now, what are we talking about? What was finished? The job that Jesus came to earth to do was finished. So let's talk about that job just a little bit. And like I said, you guys go back and read more. But I want to share with you kind of a simple way of explaining the cross. But I hope that you guys, even if you're five, you're taking this in. And then when you're 10, you'll remember it. And then when you're 15 and 25 and 35 and 45 and 55 and 105, I hope you guys will remember this. I want to give you something visual to help you remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. So here's our painting that our very first TVC kids made. And as you can see, there's a lot of mess out here, right? So this canvas represents our world. And God had created this beautiful, huge, wonderful world, right? God, who is perfect, he created our world. But how did it get messy? How did our world get messy? That was sin, right? The things that you and I do that are so very wrong and against God's heart, right? So that made our world messy, like all this paint. But God sent Jesus, who is represented on this cross here. Do you see any mess on Jesus? No, the cross is pure white. So Jesus came down. That's what we talk about at Christmas, right? Jesus came down as the pure white with no sin, absolutely perfect, no sin. And he came into our world that was very, very messy. So what did he do? Let's see what the next canvas tells us. Jesus took our sin. He took the punishment for us. All right. So do you see how it's white out here? The sin is no longer on us, is it? The sin and the punishment came on the cross. Jesus took away our sin on the cross when he died on that cross. So what we were just talking about when he said it is finished, he was talking about the job that I came to do to take away the people's sin is finished here on the cross. And that would be it. It was finished forever. Now, our story goes on, and it's so very sad, the ending. But do you ever um, just want to get to the end of a story? So I want to tell you, the end of this story has a really happy ending. All right? And we're going to talk about it more next week. But 
just in case you're gonna miss it, you know what happens, right? He's put in the tomb the third day, earthquake, the stone rolls away and he comes out, he is risen. That's what we're gonna talk about next week and I'm so excited to share that with you. But I want you guys to think this week, it's seven days. I want you to think for these seven days about what it means that Jesus died on the cross for you and for me. So I've got a couple of props I thought I would help you guys with. So do you remember at the Last Supper, he brought the bread and he said, this is my body, take, eat, and what? Remember me, right? And same thing with the wine. This is the blood that I shed for you. He was talking about on that day on the cross, the blood that he shed, the body that was broken so much. Take all these things and remember me. And so on this Friday, when it's coming up, it's called Good Friday. A lot of people will have a drive through at our church, but a lot of people will gather and will take communion and we remember what Jesus did for us. So I hope you guys will do that with your family. That might be something you could do. Another thing that we've done last year, Mr. Chris made this cross for me. And I so wanted to have my own cross to be able to think about Jesus. And so he made this cross and our family just gathered together and we took some nails just like this and we set them up and we pounded them in and we thought about what is the sin that God has to forgive me for? Me, Miss Jamie, just like you. So sit, sit with your family, maybe take communion together, maybe pray together and talk about Maybe you want to talk to your mom and dad about what is your sin. You know, what are the things that you struggle with that go against God's heart, right? And go against what God asks you to do. And maybe you don't want to talk about it. Maybe you just want to talk to God about it. Just like we talked about last week, praying, right? Spend some time with God. Maybe you make your own cross. Hammer those nails in and thank God. Remember, remember what he did for us on the cross. It's something that I want you guys to remember your whole lives, what he did on the cross and why did he do it? Did he have to take that pain? And it did hurt him, right? Did he have to have that suffering? No, he was God, he was perfect. He didn't deserve any punishment. Why did he do this? Why would he do such a thing? He did it because he has such great love for you for me and your family, for each one of us. He loves us so well that he gave his son. And that is the good news. The good news is he died for us to pay for our sin. And on the third day, he's gonna rise again. So guys, I hope you will spend this week actually thinking a little bit about what is it that, um, that Jesus needed to die for me? What is it It's in my heart that I need to change to be more like him, to grow more like him each day? Take a little time to think about that. Fill out your journal pages. Spend some time with your family this week. And we will be back next week for He is Risen, the story of hope. All right, you guys, I love you so very much. And I hope to see you soon.